tail like a lizard, but it's covered in fur, fur like a squirrel. And her two pets that follow her around look like animal versions of her with more snake-like heads. Hmm. So the fact that the group keeps saying that she might be a cat probably doesn't make <laughs> any sense to you. I think it's they don't know what else it could possibly be. They're like, what's a random animal that I can pretend to call this? There's actually a lot more to that, but I'm not going to tell you. I want it to organically. You. Okay, yeah. I dig it. You're having problems it's with your not, headset I again. Think we can barely hear you again. How? What's the weather like? Here? Yeah. Uh, better yet? Yeah, we can hear you a lot better. Okay. Um, it, it's kind of hard to tell. It's not raining by any means, but the uh, with how the city is designed. It's, if you guys have ever been to, like, really large cities, there's always this, even when it's clear out, there's always kind of a weird haze, just because. Okay. Well, that, that's not actually what I need to know. What's the temperature? Oh, um, I would say mid-60s. Okay. Right. Um, still warmer. Yeah. I mean, Okay. So in that case, Marlo's a taller human, um, 6'2", 6'3", somewhere in there. Um, he's lithe and thin, um, very high cheekbones, um, very polished face, just a hint of makeup, um, light skin. He wears a Fancy black paroque on his head, like a, you know, <laughs> and <laughs> um, currently, because he, he changes his look a lot, um, but currently he is dressed in tight black, almost like ballet pants. Um, he's got a strange jacket. Um, well, that uh, actually looks like a modern motorcycle jacket, um, but it looks a little bit out of place in our setting, right. um, that on the back says, um, Hard Rock Abyss in whatever your, um, your primary, like, first language is. It actually switches. <laughs> it's an amazing souvenir. Yeah, it's an amazing souvenir. Um, <laughs> over that, he's got a a light blue and gray coat that kind of has a um, iridescent look to it. Um, that he wears kind of sideways, almost like draped over one shoulder, so you can still see the back of his jacket um, because it's nice out. Currently, he is not wearing an undershirt, and he's got the jacket open, so you can see his chest, you can see his abs. He's very, very, very um, ripped. <laughs> but not like in a bulky way, like in a, like a Bruce Lee kind of way. Yeah, he's um, right, right, right. The, that, that swimmer kind of way, where everything yeah. is really lean, but yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Um, he has a light purple um, scarf tied around his neck and just kind of hanging down within all of that. Um, and a matching one around his waist, kind of like a belt. Uh, I love that he's got two jackets and no shirt and two scarves, but still no shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, Melee? <laughs> all right. Uh, my character is uh, a dwarf. He is uh, pretty tall for a dwarf. Close to the five foot range. She has very, very kind of like dark tan skin, gray, uh, long hair tied back in a ponytail. She's actually not 
like a normal dwarf where they're stout and kind mm -hmm. of, you know, barrel chested. She's actually thinner, but you can't really tell too much because of the, she has a full set of uh, scale mail armor with a cloak and everything yeah. and shield. But you can tell by some of the ways that she acts that some, she's actually kind of young for a dwarf, but kind of middle aged for a human standard. So she's about like 40 or so. Okay. All right. Uh, I guess full moon since Scott went to get, grab some coffee. So full moon's just normal uh, draw. <laughs> Why are you guys laughing? Why are you just going to So, not sure about your character, but it, uh, you know how familiar you are with um, the drow, or should I say the dark elves. I'm pretty much super dark skin, like my little character there. I have white hair. Uh, it depends on how I have it. I'll style it differently. It doesn't really matter that much. Uh, my robes alternate between uh, black and white for the most part, were colors. And uh, But the thing that you notice most of me, about me, you'll see a uh, sword at my hip. It was a that has a scale word with hexagons with costume gems with ruby reds and a slight gold in lace. Nothing too much, but I'm, I don't really stand out. I, I don't think. Oh. Certainly don't stand out in the way that it sounds like Marlo does. <laughs> yeah, if we're next to each other. You probably don't even see me. <laughs> Marlo does that on purpose, though. Yes, and I was going to say, it sounds like Marlo, especially as a drow, would probably be doing that on purpose as well. I don't know what I do on purpose. Less with the standing out. Um, would I know what everybody's roles have been thus far on the boats or on their ships? Well, you would know that Mist is on the smaller ship and she's actually its captain and owner. Okay. Um, I believe Rindle has been referring to Melee as the captain. You probably don't know what uh, Marlowe's position or Full Moon's at this point. Okay. And then I don't, and I imagine Randall probably wouldn't have referred to himself as the helmsman, but you might have been able to glean that from what was going on. Okay. Yeah. So would I know who's on which ship other than that? I know that then Randall, Neely, and Full Moon would be on one at least. If you, you're pretty sure, so of the crew, um, you're pretty sure all of the orc just. It's pretty easy to observe. All the orcs are currently on Miss Smaller Ship, and then mm -hmm. the uh, uh, pretty much everybody else is on the other, the other ship. Um, oh, okay. So yeah. It's mainly humans, a few dwarves, but not very many, and then a bunch of rat folk. Okay. Um, but we'll go ahead and get. We'll go ahead and start. Um, uh, the game. The uh. When last we left you guys, you um, managed to take off the arm and then take prisoner uh, a woman by the name of Ayazni. Uh, requisitioned her staff of needle control, basically. Um, all while under the watchful gaze of the leader of the Izzet, Niv Mizzet, the Red Blue Dragon. You are currently outside of his main, like, tower, essentially. Um, and you currently have a prisoner. What do you want to do? Prisoner is not the word I don't think we use. Okay, what word would you use? Forced guest. <laughs> okay, who is currently unconscious. Take well, a nap. Yeah. Okay. Well, while, while she's Relaxing. resting, yeah. I'll turn back to Full Moon, walk over to him. Well, now that that's done, I believe you had asked just a moment ago before that started why we were still here and hadn't left. Yes. Yep. Sorry, definitely was not ignoring you, but kind of felt like not dying would be a good thing. Um, so I think we're here for several reasons. Uh, Melee specifically wanted to come and see the forges. And I wanted to help her get there so that she could see their technology and whatever the foundry stuff is. I was hoping to, if possible, to see if I could get a business 
transaction done to help kickstart <clears throat> um, uh, Canopy Corp. But if that doesn't work out, it's not really that important. I can just drop off this package to Niv Mizzet and we can head out. That's not a big deal because I can fulfill my debt with the person that I owe for the drow hand by with Ky Kyber crystals, which I can get when I go back to Eberron. Um, let me think. Wow, my hand, my that's bruised. And so what are you thinking? Um, would we be able to do the same thing in our plane, in our world? For the weapons, no. Uh, specifically, the debt, the transaction, the business I'm trying to get specifically wanted is it weapons. Um, for Mealy, their type of foundry, from what I understand, is completely different than what was on our planet. Um, oh, that reminds me. Um, Dahlia also was wanting, looked, seemed to be wanting different spices and uh, things for your crew. So she was coming with us and was doing some shopping along the way. And Rendell was going, I had invited along because Rendell, Rendell is has great, his own things. He, yeah. You have no idea what Rendell is. Oh, no, know. actually, Rendell told Mist we stood and talked about it for a while. So Rendell was taking care of some business of himself as we walked. That's all she says about that. Okay. Um, um, so that's that's why we're still here and haven't left just yet. So if you excuse me while she's taking a nap, I'm going to head over to the is it guards and just let them know that I have a package for Niv Mizzet that I was able to get from the Gith Yonki and at his leisure, I would like to deliver it to him. Okay, um, so at this, as you start walking over there, um, the, the beetles are gone, but it's there's still a lot of people that were injured by this attack. Um, you were not the only target of these things, so it, it, it pretty much ate anyone with less than six hit points. So most of the civilians are uh, okay. dying right now. So Sorry. most of the guards are not case. paying attention to No, no, their... I thought... Sorry, I thought the civilians had managed to get inside. Um, and a lot the of ones them scattered, but any of them that weren't quick enough, they definitely got... I'm going to start administering medical aid then. Okay. Um, the uh, niv it seems inter interested. You can see him from this tower, but he's not coming down. He's, and... Well, Marla's actually yelling at him, but I'll explain what he's okay. yelling at him here in a bit. No, that's fine if you're yelling at him. What are you yelling? At? Well, I don't want to... Okay. Well, Barlow is just up there on the top of that platform with <laughs> with the unconscious drow. And he's just like, well, we got her. Um, I don't know what you want to do with her. But she's alive. I mean, I'm sure she can answer some questions. And um, someone can show me how to get down, because I can only do that bamboofy thing once per day. <laughs> Make a persuasion check. <laughs> okay, yeah. He, he, yaw, uh, he kind of yawns, stretches his back muscles a little bit flies down and actually lands on the street, which kind of interrupts you, Miss, doing medical things, because he seems to not really care so much about, say, crushing people. Um, okay. Uh, so it looks like Full Moon and Mist are administering triage. niv -Mizzet, so you're on top of a building. niv -Mizzet's face is basically right in front of you. Um, Large, almost like fin-like protrusions coming from his red and black face. He, it's very actually leonine. Actual face. Um, How ridiculously large is he? Um, like, so he's gargantuan. So technically, um, you, as he talks, you realize that his front canines are about the same size as you. How bad is his breath? Minty fresh, actually. 
it looks like somebody has invented the toothbrush and made one for his size. Wow, um, you're a lot larger when you're close. I'm Marlo. I'm Niv Mizzet. Thank you for capturing that one. Wait, how do you spell that? N I V hyphen M I Z Z E T. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you. Now, uh, what can I do for you? You seem to have come here looking for my attention. Now you have it. Well, um,. This person here, she like was like letting people like eat your followers. Like I guess you're kind of now standing on. Um, I just like yeah, we we caught her. Um, can you help me down? <laughs> Size. Oh, bring that one with you. Um, pop on my back. Arches his neck so that you can get onto his shoulder yeah. blade. Um, yeah, he carries her over. Okay. The the rest of her, there's there's a piece missing somewhere down there. I think my my comrade um, picked it up. I, I think she'll do fine without an arm. Assuming I grant her some leniency. We have ways of repairing that here. Um, I, I think my friends, they wanted an audience with you, or at least like someone like, it, you're probably pretty busy, but you know, like someone in your organization, maybe we can like skip the line a little bit, especially since like the line's kind of, you know, like Do I look dying. busy? Uh, I'm sorry, what was that? He, you just, I, I'm not busy. Do I look busy? Mainly I'm just bored. Oh, all right. Well, that's missed. I think Full Moon needed to talk to you. Okay. Um, I'll go down and I'll start helping people too. Okay, you kind of climb down. Um, one of the guards actually takes Iosni from you. Uh, Niv Mizzet kind of looks around, sighs, shrinks down into basically a halfling uses polymorph self to become this aged wizened halfling um still his with like bright red hair but a, but a blue beard um and walks up to mist what did you want still deep growling voice seems weird coming from a creature this small uh, hello nif missit it's a pleasure to meet you i have a package that you well, it was lost. It was taken by the Gith Yonki, and it's addressed to you. I wanted to make sure you got it. And would like to talk to you about the possibility of a business arrangement between you and... What is that person's name? From Eberron. Oros from Eberron. Uh, he, uh, well, first, package. Yep, package. Here you go. Takes it. I ordered this years ago. Fix it in a bag. Mm -hmm. Yep, sorry that Gith Yonki had it. Um, so, sorry. I'm trying to think of how we would do this. Uh, oh, our next, by the way, said to say hi. Um, all right. Uh, do you have a way, uh, do you have a method of doing business with them? I unfortunately am bound to this plane. He says it kind of with a wistful look when he says it. I do actually have a way to travel between this place and Eberron. Um, so yes, I have a means of enacting the business between the two of you. And what... Exactly, do they want? 
they would like is it weaponry if possible <laughs> i believe he specifically said oh is it gun that is going to be very difficult there are rules concerning trade between technology levels okay if you want to do something illegal you'll have to contact the demir okay so it's illegal to bring the is it weaponry over there i guess i will have to take care of that business in a different manner <clears throat> Well, is, there, is anything... there anything else I can do for you? I don't believe so. If it's not possible for that transaction to happen, well, I, is there I anything could sell I... to you? And what you do with it is completely up to you. Very well. Um... <laughs> I'm sorry, I got distracted by the text messages um yes i would love to buy some what are you looking for would you like to hey our weapons to shoot lightning or fire lightning definitely feels more in tune with my elements <laughs> that will be three thousand gold per cannon all right, three thousand gold per cannon. I will. If you go would ahead. like something more hand portable, we do have lightning rifles, but they're just as expensive. All right. Well, I'll take a couple of the lightning cannons. Note over here: minus six thousand GP. Would it be possible to have them delivered to my ship over in Ward 8? Of course. Easy enough. Just make sure the Dock Master knows you're planning on accepting the delivery. Okay, I will let him know as soon as I can get back there. Uh, you'll, have to, you'll have to go to the forges. I don't usually handle transactions. Well, thank you very much, and I'm glad I was able to deliver your package for you. It does give you a note, basically, of allowing you entry. Okay, thank you. Like a letter of introduction. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, is there anything I could do for you? <clears throat> give me a ride on your ship sometime. Right now, it's a little... My attentions have to be focused here, but I have long since, have long dreamed of visiting other worlds. Well, you would be more than welcome on my ship, Nifm, is it? Uh, Your Excellency, sorry to interrupt. Uh, I am Full Moon. Yep. Uh, you Full said you would like a ride on a ship. I, no offense to her, but her ship isn't to the caliber that ours is, as well as it's not as accommodating. Plus, we would have people there to help you. Uh, with whatever needs you need. Uh, Nifm, is it? This is my companion, Full Moon. And he is I'm right. His, sure. his ship is larger than mine, and they are going to have a chef on board. I am still trying to hire one for my ship, That, if that matters. But you are welcome on my ship at any point. Very well. I will keep both of you in mind. What are the names of your ships? Mine is the Astral Scythe. It's fairly ominous. Okay. It felt wrong to rename it when I was given possession of it. Understandable. And uh, ours is a work in progress. You can double check with the captain if you'd like. But if we get your sponsorship, we can change it to whatever name you would like. I have no problem with any name, but um, are you offering to sell me your ship? Uh, nay, I'm offering to sell our services of our ship. I can... When my business here settles down, then I will definitely keep you in mind. Uh, what did you say your name was again? Full Moon. That's what people call me. Very well. Master Full Moon. I will...
with you and your company in mind? Well, as we have this in mind, uh, is there anything that we might be able to use to show to other people that we are friendly with you so that we don't get attacked indiscriminately? I don't know if you noticed, but we are quite new to this area. And any help that you could provide, we could help you in the future. Of course, of course. And he starts stippling around um, the pocket, which you know doesn't actually exist in Polymorph's spell, but he pulls out a locket um, with the is it symbol on it. Uh, take this as a mark of our company. And if you get into any kind of trouble, it contains a small fraction of my power. I bow, humbly and graciously take it, and I continue to help the other people. Thank you for your time and of your presence. So, um, in game mechanics terms, the is it locket? Um, it basically works as a ring of spell storing, um, except that it can only hold one spell, but that spell can be up to fifth level. Right now, it holds a chain lightning spell. Cool, cool. <clears throat> And that chain lightning spell actually uses Niv Mizzet spell save DC, so it, which is twenty three. So there's that. Okay. Um. So Mistle, unless Niv Mizzet wants to continue talking, Mist is going to take her leave um, and okay. continue helping the people. It, most of the helping the people is. Catching up some wounds and getting the dead bodies up the tree. Right. Not a lot you can do. Unless you want to spend some time revivifying people. I don't have revivify, so no. Uh, Thank you very anyone much. Anyone got some diamonds out there in the crowd that you want to donate? <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you very much, Niv Mizzet. And I look forward to traveling with you in the future i look forward to a time that i that i have the ability to do that okay. and yeah I'll you know you could just leave if, i mean if you don't like your job that's what i did i didn't say i didn't like my job i said that it's an interesting time I mean, you, there's a lot you could do. I bet you'd be a fantastic actor. We can, like, change your form and, yeah, we could, like, start a troop. You know what? Make a persuasion roll. Can we help? <laughs> no. Ooh, can I spend two dollars to reroll? Sure. <laughs> he considers it. You did not get this. It was a spell save. It was a save. It was a uh, DC twenty five check to actually get him to join your theater troupe. <laughs> However, it does give you a name. Um, is. This it uh. So Scott, before you finish, can you mind if I just bend luck on that then? <laughs> sure. So basically, I'm just gonna roll a d4 to add to his. So if I can give him enough, you you'll actually get it to pass. Um. Okay, that's fine. Go ahead. Roll a d4. Okay, he's. I I have considered a, a life on the stage. Let me cover a, a, a. Let me clear up this war and. Yeah, I think I could spend a few decades as a starving artist. Are you sure? I mean, like, I don't know how long this war is going to take up. I mean, just just in all honesty. 
my my people probably don't live as long as your people. So I mean, but you, even if I'm dead by the time you finish, you should totally do it because you got to follow your dreams, man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I haven't had such a interesting conversation in a long time. Mr. Can I give you a hug? <laughs> sure. You get hugged by a deceptively strong halfling. Cool. <laughs> I want a hug. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything else anyone else wants to do? Get a hug. <laughs> so I would plan on investigating any of the bodies, looking for any kind of armor, any kind of shields so that we can possibly pull out. Okay. Um, it's like armor-wise, most of it is breastplates and. I would say you get like three breastplates. Uh, a few of them are in half plate. No one, you you notice no one's really wearing heavy armor uh, here. Just out of no one, they, it's it's just too heavy for the city. And it doesn't really help. Uh, the uh, um. You do find actually you, you find some weird sidearms. Um, you, you you do recognize pistols. These look different. Um, they uh, instead of shooting balls of lead, they seem to be designed to shoot like heated gas. Um, essentially, it's it, it mimics a firebolt cantrip. Cool. Are there just a bunch of those laying around? Or not a bunch, Most but... of the... So, about four of the... Is it guards did die during the fight? So, there's four of those laying around. Oh, if no one's going to miss them, I'll snag one. Okay. So, yeah, it's basically a wand of firebolt, only shaped like a gun, and it uses your dex modifier your attack instead of Okay. Um, while we're moving it around, Mist would pick one of them up as well, but she... It's obviously one of the guards, right? Mm -hmm. She probably would hand it to one of the living guards and continue working. The living guard just puts it in his back waistband. They, they seem unconcerned. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. but yeah, you guys get the streets cleared. Um, hey. Full moon, you you get that what you requested. Um, pretty easy. Uh, what else do you want to do? Um, I'd like to head over to the fount, the forges. Okay. So. Uh. Yeah. As you guys get to the forges, it looks, it's more of a manufacturing site than it is a forge, which merely re religiously is heretical to the mother of spiders. Uh, you, the, you, this is probably the first time you've really seen mass production on any kind of scale. Occasionally mm -hmm. the Viren do it, but for the most part, but to the, the teachings of the mother of spiders, the act of creation is one of imparting your soul. The idea of like these automatons and basically robots and making the making these the things. Car factory. Yeah. Is kind of hurts you on a deep emotional level. Great. Um so but yeah you come uh, somebody greets you immediately. Uh, a, a human. Welcome to the forges. What, what can I do for you? Um, I need these. Whole hand a note from Nip Mizzet. Uh, 
delivered to my ship the Astral Scythe, if possible. He reads the note. Oh, very well. Um, we delivery is a little tough right now, but we can get the. They should be able to be delivered to the docks by dawn. Um, do you do you have a crane, or will you need us to provide one? I will need you to provide one. Uh, very well. We will. I'll, I'll get my best people on it. Um, what is your name? My name is Nathaniel. Nathaniel? Thank you very much, Nathaniel. Um, he then calls over. Master Rao, are you uh, are you available? We have a special order. Master Rao. Yes, uh, he's one of the few people that have dimensional magic. Uh, it makes it easier to transport. Hmm. Oh, I I did want to ask you, Nathan, Nathan, if you've ever heard. No, sorry, Nathaniel. Um, if you've ever, if it would be possible to make something that could make coffee underwater for about six gallons at a time. No, um, a better solution, uh, if I'm being honest, is you're going to have to Essentially, you're you're going to have to tap into a probably a pocket dimension. Um, okay. The best way would be to get to create. It would be, and this is purely theoretical. I we I've never actually created a demi plane, but essentially you would have to create. In your mind, the perfect form of a plane of coffee, <laughs> and using some very high-level magics that uh, are rare even here, create that plane, and then we could make an artifact to tap into the plane of coffee. Huh. So theoretically, what wizards would be able to make a demi plane of coffee? None of them that exist here, I can tell you that. Hmm. Uh, the only time I've ever heard of the of anyone being able to create a demi plane would be the inhabitants of Barovia, but it's kind of iffy if that was from Faerun or Malatane. Hmm. Okay. Anyone else that you can think of? Okay. Well, I'll have to keep that in mind. Hmm. Well, I... Should let you and Master Raoul... Oh, actually. Yes? There is one other. Sorry. It's... I was thinking directly of the plane. There is another one that uses verbal magic. Just saying the words on this particular plane has a tendency to create things. Um, they inadvertently called the... Uh, uh, created the Oh God of Hangovers once. That sounds horrific. It was pretty bad. Um, but... It's a very strange planet. It's completely flat, on uh, uh, upheld by four elephants that ride a, on a flying space turtle. Hmm. Do you it know any? So, sorry, please go ahead. Uh, it doesn't really have a name, although most of us just call it the Disc World. Okay. Do you have an engineer cartographer that might have charts to Discworld? No. 
Do you know anyone that would know the nine point coordinates to it? You could definitely access one of the libraries in. Again, we are not. For all of our power, charting the stars here is not really something that is common. In fact, only there are currently only two beings on this planet that can cast spells of that variety. Vraska and Master Rao. Okay. Uh, what I would, would <coughs> recommend is somewhere where planar travel is more common. Okay. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. So, I don't know what Melee's going to be doing, but um, we've made it to the forges. Uh, Mist is going to walk around, and I would like to use $10 of my donation for an NPC. Say again? You want to recruit for your crew? Yeah. Okay. Um. So you find a uh, you, you find a, a fairly stocky Boros agent. Kind of, it's not in the forges. It's somebody watching the forges. He he's not very good at stu subterfuge. Um. But he seems to be watching the comings and goings. Uh, he looks actually kind of bored. His armor is scratched up quite a bit. Okay. But it, it's it's obvious that he's watching. Everybody see, acknowledges him, but they but they just kind of walk on. So. Okay. I will walk up to him and kind of. I guess he's leaning against something. Yeah, he's leaning against basically a street lamp. Okay, I will stand next to him so that we can both kind of watch while I'm waiting for my companions to finish their stuff and go, is it afternoon or morning? Afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, afternoon. I'm Miss Toby. Uh, who would you be? I'm Inspector A Avis. I'm Inspector Avis. Avis? Um, <clears throat> you seem to be watching all the comings and goings here, but you seem kind of bored. Hmm. It's hard to be a spy for the Boros when they insist on me wearing this. Well, um, would the Boros be interested in one of their spies traveling off-world and gathering information for him, and then your current attire shouldn't affect your ability to um, gather intelligence that way. I am given quite uh, quite a bit of leeway, and you seemed to have made contact with the Izzet, and so I am perfectly fine. It is in keeping with my current mission to follow you. Would you care to join my crew, then, on the Astral Scythe? It would be much easier to watch you if I did. Excellent. Uh, what sort of abilities would you be able to bring to my crew? I'm quick with the sword, and I have a good... And I'm a pretty... Make a pretty good lookout. Excellent. Um, well, then, welcome aboard. Uh, Inspector Avis. Uh, we... Is there anything you'd like to ask about me or the people I travel with before we shake hands on this agreement? No. Okay. I will well. observe and report. You get the sense that he's just bored. He wants to... He, he, he's tired of Yep. All right. Well, when you are ready, uh, we are going to head back soon. Um, did you ever know to Ignatius and Sarah? No. 
Okay. Do you know where one of the nearest Boros graveyard would be? He looks at you funny with the word graveyard. I, I don't understand. Um, come with me. Um, I would appreciate your help. It'll make more sense like, as we literally, go. Literally, he doesn't understand the term graveyard. Okay. Where would you lay your agents to rest? We, uh, are you talking like funerary rites? Yes. We cremate them. Like, universally. Okay. Where would the n nearest cremation for Boros be? Uh, it would be back in Ward 9. Okay. We'd had to, it, it would take about a week to set up the process. I'm still confused by this term graveyard. Um, well, back where I'm from, many cultures actually lay their dead to rest in the ground and put tombstones with stones to mark where they were resting. Sounds like a and horrific waste of land. It can definitely be seen that way. It depends on your perspective, but... I mean, the so Gagari the do something similar, but then they plant plants on them and use it. So, <clears throat> um, for the Boros, do your dead just need to be cremated? It doesn't have to be done in a specific place? No, it's just a standard ceremony, but it, it takes a while. Okay. Um, I can show you the rites. Um, I'm a little confused as to why. Uh, well, because I have found some Boros that were ambushed, and I would like to lay their remains to rest properly. Well, all right, very well. Um, grieve at least a little bit of the remains and show you the rights. Okay. Um, I'll let Mealy know that I'm going to be taking care of Ignatius and Sarah's remains, and I will be back shortly. Okay. Full Moon, what are you buying? Well, we were at a weapon shop, so I was going to look around to see if there's anything that we possibly could use for our ship. Try to talk. Maybe smooth a, smooth a little bit. Okay. Maybe try to get somewhat of a contract while we're actually doing things. Because if we're getting into moving things around, you know, why not move a little bit extra? Okay. Um, so, it, it's a visit weapon shop. Um, it, there are swords and, like, typical mundane um, items you normally there are, there are, however, pistols. There's also a very large collection of spell scrolls here, actually. Um, up to pretty much any evocation spell up to 5th level can be found. Yeah, I'm not looking to any kind of spells, but since this is a forge place, I'll be looking to melee to try to possibly guide me around to possibly get a better deal, things those lines, because on the way here, we were talking about um, getting medium armor, or possible shield and maybe other supplies for our crew. Okay. Uh, to outfit your crew, I mean, it's, I would say, so it's five gold for a shield, 50 gold for scale armor. So, just an idea, because nothing, nothing's in disrepair as of yet. It's just a place to possibly purchase in the future. Talk to them now, just in case we need to come back, because. So, they, uh, I will say, mundane items are slightly cheaper than they would be elsewhere because of nature of mass production. However, they are also inferior quality to where so most that you actually get the sense they use that in order to cover up the kind of mistakes that have happened with with your mechanical means, they tend to enchant things a lot. Um, it's kind of a balancing factor. What that means mechanically is everything is a, is about seventy five percent of what it should be. But there is a failure chance. I mean, for armor, I'm not even. We won't worry about it. Armor is armor. But for weapons, it's whenever you roll a natural one, the weapon breaks. Are there any so magical just... shields? Magical shields? Yes. Yeah. Uh. You can get up to it. You can get up, there's a plus one shield that you can get for 500. 
There is a plus two shield that you can get for five thousand. Um, there's also a spell guard shield, which you can also get for five thousand. Spell guard shield gives is a plus one shield that also gives you advantage on all saving throws to resist magical attacks. Hmm. Um, there is also an animated shield, but it is way outside your price range. Mist could probably afford it if she hadn't bought a bunch of cannons. It is 50,000. Jeez. Yeah, I'm probably letting Melee know ahead of time that my budget is not that much, and uh, we should just window shop. <laughs> the animated shield is like in a display c cabinet and actually has a placard of what it does. It's basically, it acts as a shield without you having to hold it. And yeah. So try to figure out whoever looks in charge, go to try to talk to them. Hello. Hello, good sir. Uh, a moment of your time. It's actually really hard to tell gender. They're very hairy. Um, what can I do for you? It's not what you can do for me. It's what I can do for you now and what you can do for me later. All right. Um, what can you I'm sure you've heard now? of the Canopy Company. I'm sure you've heard of them. Didn't you have an instant in that city... Trash Panda City? No, that's not right. Um, uh, Possum City? No, Raccoon City. Didn't you have an, a weird incident in Raccoon City once? Uh, no, no, so that's that's a misconception. For a name that we can't say legally, uh, <laughs> it was another company that it was involved with that. We are s similar. Uh, we pretty much shut up at the same time, but because of that incident, everyone tries to blame it on us. And that's that's here nor there to talk about, like I said, still legal dispute, dis uh, okay. talks. Uh, but what I was saying is, uh, the Canopy Company, the corporation, I should say, is what we are, uh, as colleagues, myself included, and among others, uh, and we are in the business of uh, scouting maps and also possibly trade if we find the right supplier. Oh, um, I'm always interested in expanding in my trade markets. Um, how far do you go? Can you get to Ward 15? Well, so I'm not the big person on the maps. I'm here just for sales, specifically. Uh, if you'd like, we can have our... our uh, wait, what's, his, what's it called now? The guy that deals with the maps? Anybody? Anybody? Cartographer out of character because I'm not there. No, I was trying to figure out what the, what we have our crew call Rindle now since he has a new title, but I don't know if we actually called him. Or, the, uh, you would, it was the helmsman. It's... Right, but I don't know if he would tell us that he was the helmsman, oh, as yeah. in you know anything. I like no he introduced himself as that. You know that or not. We'll say he has. You yeah. you know that he's the helmsman. Oh. So depending on how far you need, um, he might be able to help you out. Uh, I believe he's still with us, so I'd let him talk and figure out exactly how far. Yeah, yeah Rindle was like, I, I'm the helmsman. No, we, we can definitely get to Ward 14. We can go even further than that. So, depending on the merchandise, it uh, might be a little easier for us. Uh, just talking about possibly refitting our crew whenever we come back, um, possibly having your brand, and then we can pass it around as we transport your goods. Uh, just something to work out, because the more protected we are, the easier it is for go to come and go to bring you your whatever you need. Um, out of character, outside the, the slick talk, what are you actually trying to get him to do? I'll oh, basically try to get some discounts on either some shields or other things for our people, as well as oh, being right. able to get deals on, um, being able to get things repaired when we come back. Okay. So that we know that... If you can, uh, if you can open up some of my trade routes, I'd be very willing to give you, I would say, a 10% discount across the board. Um, excluding... Some of my more prized possessions, and he indicates the animated shield. Um, beyond, by the way, the shield, there is one other item in a case, and it is a beautiful-looking longsword. 
Um, there's a subtle angel mo motif on it. Um, you would think it would be a Boros weapon, but it doesn't have the right color scheme. Um, and uh, for... Well, all, well, for Full Moon, you can just tell it radiates magic. Melee, at, Rindle seems to recoil from it instantly. Melee, you can tell that it's powerful, and, but probably not something you can use directly. Like, full, full power. Um, you need somebody else. Somebody with a a divine connection, but a more martially focused connection. What do you mean by martially focused divine a connection? A paladin? <laughs> you need <Gosh>. a paladin. <laughs> Great, it's a holy sword. Yeah. I might be a paladin next level. <laughs> <laughs> he, if any paladin can use it, it doesn't have to be a good one. So. <laughs> <laughs> Full Moon's good. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so, now, uh, looking at the forges and how they're running things, is it just that they're not running things efficiently? That's how things are kind of like the quality's not so good. Is there any way that I could kind of nudge them in the right direction with making it better? So. It's not that it's inefficient. It's that no one that no one working the forge just really cares about what they're making. It's all assembly line stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's um, you could probably if you were to motivate the workers, you could probably make it better. I will try to motivate them. Uh, <laughs> give me a. a I won't have you unless you want to do a speech. I but we'll have you do a. Uh, let me think here. Give me a religion roll, but with your charisma instead of your intelligence. Um, you're trying. I, I mean, you can do a straight persuasion roll if you want, but I will actually set the DC lower if you can. Going to inspire uh, like inspire them. With charisma. Charisma, religion. You could, uh, you could, you know, sport. Mm -hmm. uh, What's that? I was trying to figure out if we could support because uh, Rindo yeah, can make your, actually let you your voice a little louder. I can make you all sparkling. Yeah. Okay. So. Oh. Oh I yeah, you turn up. The, <laughs> you get them motivated. The is it are extremely happy with you right now. Um, and I will give you an additional fifteen percent off any items you buy from the is it, and they no longer have that fail chance. Oh, cool. Um, oh yeah, I want to go to Hard Rock or Vinica too. Uh, <laughs> there is. <laughs> I think we've long established that hard rock exists on every plane of existence. Yep. Need a patch. Um, it is. I don't think of where it would be. Um, yeah, it's actually. It, weirdly, it's actually in your guys' ward. Um. Kind of, but it, it's fairly easy to find because um, the streets start getting wider, and the people start getting taller and grayer, and very with big ears and trunks, and you're, you're beginning to run into the loxodons. They seem to be the ones running the hard rock. Well, he's gonna wait. I mean, he's not gonna like leave for the hard rock while everyone's inside shopping. He just wants to find out where it is, okay. so they can go when they're done. So we'll go back to the, uh, so, Full Moon and, um, Melee. It actually takes you a little bit to kind of stir up the workers, but yeah, they, they are, um, they're chugging along, it's efficient, they're actually 
caring about their work for once. And, uh, we, yeah, the Izzet are super happy with that. Um, which, what? they are now applying, to the specialty items, they're applying your full discount, which is essentially right now half off. So that means that you could afford either the Holy Avenger or the Animated Shield for 25,000 gold. I still don't think you have it. No, don't, but I'm planning on looking at anything other smaller kind of shield, you know, as a token of a so peace offering, so to speak. The, the plus two shield is 2,500. Um, the plus one shield is 250. And all the items are basically half off in the shop. Is there any specific... Any, it, sometimes when shopping for magic items, especially with, when you have this much selection, it's it's easier for you to tell me what you are looking for, and I will let you know if they have something similar. I'm just looking for a regular shield, but I'll, I think I'll take the one for 250. A regular shield would be 2.5 gold, um, but yeah, if you're going to get the plus one shield, that's even better. Yeah. I'll hand over that, and then try to figure out what are those stats. I can bug you about that later. Right. It, it basically gives you plus 3D or AC. It's plus two for being a shield, and then plus one because of the plus one. So it's plus one. Sounds good. And then talk to them about uh, possibly when we come back, working out our actual contract on the matter. Uh, we'll ask for 10% now, possibly, and negotiate. The more we do it, the possibly more discussions later. We can... Uh, contracts are always negotiable. Um, in f and he actually pulls out a... A standard licensing contract, basically. Um, in fact, if you wouldn't mind signing this for me, it, I would appreciate it. <laughs> I said I would love to, but then I pass it over to Mealy. The captain has a final say. What were you saying? I was laughing at what was going on in the chat. Um, yeah, the, somebody was, um, it's a contract, a standard licensing contract. The shopkeeper wanted Full Moon to sign it, but Full Moon's now trying to get you to sign it. The contract from the, from the, uh, is it? Yeah, from the is it. What does it stipulate? What does everything say? Basically that it, it it's an indemnification clause. Basically, anything that goes wrong is not the Izzet's fault. So it's basically our fault. But how much do we get of, you know, of the contract? Uh, it's it's basically just, like, seriously, it, it basically makes it so anything, it, you don't get anything. It's a way, it's a, if, if a gun were to explode, you're not going to sue the Izzet. That's all the contract is. It's an indemnity. Well, I'm not using a gun, so I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and plus, they they don't have fail chances right now. Yeah, they don't have fail chances right now, so it doesn't really matter. So yeah. Okay. Okay. The shopkeeper then looks at Full Moon. Eh, now that business is done. Is there anything you need for me? No, your patience and time was enough, other than possibly your name, if you haven't already given it out to one of my other colleagues. Uh, names are powerful things. You can just... Just ask for old Ralph. Are you old Ralph? No. Then how do I get you? If you ask for old Ralph, you will get me. But you just said you weren't old Ralph. Correct. Old Ralph has been long dead. Old Ralph is now dead Ralph. So we should ask for old Ralph, not dead Ralph? <laughs> but you said you're not old Ralph, so how would we get you? I am old Ralph's successor. Ah, oh, that's more of a title. Yes. Well, old Ralph, good sir, or actually new Ralph, not dead Ralph, uh, it has been a pleasure. And I thank you for the time that you've given us. 
uh, while we are away or anything that we are looking for or possibly find supplies? Anything that you'd like us to keep in mind? Um, as some of the strange, um, large, man-sized beetles make good um, armor components around here. Uh, does it have to be men-sized beetles? Because I believe we were just came uh, to yes. beetles. Yes, unfortunately, the, uh, they have to be about the size of a um, their shells protect by some power for my armors and my shields. Um, if you are ever in, in an area, um, have you ever heard of a flail snail? No, but I can keep my eye open for it. They're really easy to spot. They're giant snails with an iridescent shell and... Five eye stalks that look like spiked morning stars. If you're you able, to, if you're able to harvest the shells, they they have anti spell properties that can do, do wonderful for armors and shields. And I am furiously writing this stuff down. Okay. <laughs> what do they call it? Can you say that again? Flail snail. Flail snail. How do you pronounce that with the fla? Ale or fl no. uh, fl f l a fl fl ale fl ale snail. Okay, okay. Oh. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Okay. Um. <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> Um, so what's Thank everybody you good doing while well, this is all going on? Well, I'm trying to kind of monitor the chat, but... <laughs> um. uh, Mist was with Avis going back for the remains, and if we need to take the remains with us of Ignatius and Sarah, we're going to do that and then catch up with everyone else. Easy enough. You find the, the remains. Um, and... What's it? So the hard rock, that's where you're going next. So yeah, you Well guys... maybe if if everyone else wants to go. Marlo that whole time was had his mandolin case open. He was sitting on the in the doorway playing playing, you know, doing some um culture and dress standards and <laughs> you know, trying to make some coppers. <laughs> Could Dahlia be juggling daggers oh, yeah. next to him? Yeah. It's... And just kind of no musical skill, but you know. Okay, um, you, you guys get a few onlookers. For the most part, yes. this is, uh, um, the Loxodon especially are, are taken with you. Um, the, but yeah, it's. I would say you guys get a, probably two gold out of your trouble. Uh, gold most, each, gold. Most of it in <laughs> copper. And it was loose oh. change, and That's I fine. assume it was it was passed into your mandolin case. So it's... Mm -hmm. yeah, he splits it up. Okay. Aww, sure. thank you. I'm looking forward to spending this at the Hard Rock. <laughs> um, getting a hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if you guys make your way to the Hard Rock, um, I mean it's a Hard Rock. You have to go through the gift shop to actually get to the restaurant. Um, so a few things. There are no, this time, there are no electric guitars. Everything on there is lyres and lutes and, like, files. Like, they're not. Um, the closest thing to a guitar um, would be, I guess, a... Uh, a mandola or possibly a mandicello, like, um, but the, uh, it, but yeah, it, it's a hard rock. Um, they do have, uh, jackets very similar to the one Morrow has. Um, not as good of quality, like, the stitching isn't as refined, but. Well, I just so want a patch. For the one that I got. Easy enough. 
They're, they have patches. Um, I would actually say Ravinica has invented Velcro, so they can actually they actually have the, the ones with Velcro backing on them. Does it have the same cool enchantment where it uh -huh. it changes language? Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Uh, do they have a problem with my pets following us into the hard rock? No issue. Um, in general, they or Renica has way weirder things that are actually intelligent, like sentient molds. So they don't give a okay. crap. So while we're sitting down waiting for Marlo to complete his purchase, Mist is going to take out the smallest kyber shard she has. Because... Mm -hmm. uh, both Frost and Ice have been very well behaved, and there's been a lot of magic around. And I, this is probably a terrible idea. It's pretty I'm bad if you're going to do what I think you're about to do. Okay. Um, you're going to feed one to it? Do it. Do it, do it yeah, do it. yeah, I am. Roll a d20 for me, please. Oh, God. <laughs> the place is going to explode. I want to buy stuff, too, real quick. <laughs> <laughs> probably not going to explode. Oh, Do I see it get cheaper it. after it explodes? Do I see it? <laughs> Four. Okay. Um, which one did you speed that to? I was going to feed it to Ice, the smaller or one. Yeah. yeah. So uh, Ice gobbles it down greedily. Um, Ice's scent changes slightly. Kind of like cotton candy. Does her attitude change? <laughs> Not that you can really tell right now. Oh no. <laughs> but it seems to be like edging less towards you and more towards Rindle now. Yeah, great. We have another Rindle. Cool. Um. Miss does actually doesn't have a problem with that. Also, um, you, you, your passive perception is higher. It, uh, its claws grow sharper. Um, it doesn't get any bigger, but its muscles get stronger. Its teeth get sharper, and its eyes become redder. Nothing ominous about any of that. Yeah, don't worry about that. Nah, nothing. No big deal. Yeah, totally normal. <laughs> <laughs> I don't regret that at all. And I will totally order some food for myself and Avis and Frost and Ice. Okay. Um, stand, again, standard hard rock fare, so burgers and other okay. standard Americana food. Um, Did you get the big old sampler platter with all the onion rings and the cheese sticks and, and stuff? Every, everything's super greasy. Um, the, uh, so yeah, it, it's empty. Uh, yeah, you get. You now have. Although you have a hard rock patch, uh, Dolio, what are you buying? Well, I don't want to be a copycat as much as I really would love the jacket. Is there? Would they have anything along the lines of a backpack? Something oh, yeah. like what I already have, but with the same logo and all that. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, New travel pack, because that's what you would go for, I think. It's, Unless they had something like a frying pan, like cooking utensils, that's the same thing. <laughs> I know they usually have like salt and pepper cooking, shakers and, and that kind of thing, but... They wouldn't have cooking utensils, they would have a lot of barware. Like a shaker or something? Yeah, like shakers. Okay, one of those two then. Yeah, okay. a bag and a shaker. Okay. I'll go for it. Total, that would be like one gold, so... Yes, there we go. Still expensive. Uh. So yeah, it's but otherwise it, it and it's branded hard rock, so like all over it. Um, Real classy. Yeah. 
Do they have stickers? <laughs> Damn. No stickers? Damn. Damn. <laughs> huh? It, 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 that has to do with lack of... Glue? No, adhesive? actually, adhesive is easy. It's the paper is a problem. Like, high-quality paper is an issue. If they hmm. don't have the they might have hard rock magnets. Is there, yeah, is there a magnet that I could attach to my shield? Because <laughs> it's freaking hilarious, yes. There, you, you find, like, a refrigerator magnet. I will get one. If we're going to keep visiting these places in different worlds, I'll get them for each one. Okay. <laughs> I love yeah. this. Okay. We should be talking to Hard Rock at this point about, like, a brand deal. Because yes. we're advertising. We're yes. advertising for them at this point. Mm -hmm. That is very true. We should request Full Moon and Rendell to help us out with that. Uh -huh. Yes, if anyone could. Full Moon. Yeah, Mist will lean over to Full Moon after um, they come back with the branding. Full Moon, what do you think about trying to get the Hard Rock to sponsor us? I don't know. He might be away from his keyboard. He's not responding. Oh, I am responding. Oh, Just my mic was muted, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so I was going to say, I would enjoy that, but unfortunately, the things that you'd like to do, we need to be less high profile as Hard Rock is. I'm pretty sure we would get more um, attention if we had their sponsoring. Well, our companions are already kind of branding themselves <laughs> with Hard Rock. <laughs> At this point, by the way, your uh, your server, a uh, locks on female. Can... Is there anything else I can help you with? She's just like tapping her. Like, it's obvious that she wants the table back. Um, is there anything else I can do for you? Perhaps oh yeah, could drinks? we? Yes, could we do another round, please? Of course, of course. Um, uh, ales again, or would you like something a little stronger? I saw on the menu some sort of sparkly thing with elder flower in it. I would love to try that. Uh, okay. And she runs off to the bartender. Is that the only special request or anything else? The biggest thing of ale you get. Okay. Do they have a weird, like, house blend Bloody Mary? Oh, of course. Okay, one of those. Yeah, okay. Because they're always so weird at every restaurant. Well, yeah. <laughs> they're so different. Uh -huh. Usually so... it has to do with vegetables on hand, the restaurant actually can eat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, our server is off getting those drinks. So when we get back home to Suabos, are we still in trouble with the Master of the Eight? Are we still researching the different... Um, Monasteries? I thought we already had a chance to do that. I thought uh, Rendell was waiting to hear back on his paper so we can figure out if he's going to get his degree or if we're going to move on to another temple. Rendell's paper was accepted. He has his degree. Um, he is now, it's still, issue, it's still an issue who actually controls that monastery. Uh, whether it's Marlowe or Rendell or but that, that was the situation that you guys left the back. Mist, you don't know this because... Not unless Rendell is... Sh well, before we left, Rendell... No, I... Yeah, that's right. Unless Rendell is sharing it right now that his paper was accepted, then Mist has no idea because th we were still waiting when I got kidnapped. Correct. Yeah, well, I think he would, he would share it because you didn't know and we were actually bringing it up right now. He would let you know. Okay, so do you guys want to investigate some of the other monasteries while we wait? Um, just to get a better idea of how the Master of the Eight is operating? Tucker, you're muted. How do we plan to investigate here, though? Well, no, I mean, when we, when we get back to Suabos, because we're almost wrapped up, aren't we? Well, it sounded like we were going to stay here for a long time. That's why we were trying to drum up business, I thought. Didn't... 
Are you still well, drumming up business? Because I've gotten my business. Well, I'll tell you, here's the thing, right? Like, we haven't seen this Master of the Eight since we left. I don't know. Have you, like, in your travels? No, I don't think he's able to leave Suabos. Right. So, um, well, look, we do have to go back. You you need to go back. And the, the people that I hired, they, I just hired them to help find you. I mean, I, I, don't, I can't afford to keep paying them. I don't think they'd want to anyway. They're going to want to go back. But after that, why stay? I mean, if he's not there, why do we have to be there? That's true. Um, and I would love to continue exploring. Uh, so the Githsarai actually... It, it's really cool. When they saw me, they, they called me something that I've never heard before, a Kadachian. And they, they said there was others like me out in other worlds. And they said that the dreamers occasionally create Kadachians to help them out and bond with them. But the way they said it, it didn't sound like they were talking about my dreamer. So there's that. But at some point... They didn't say the dreamers. They said the Krakens. Right. The Kraken. And I... The way they described it, though, sounded like the dreamer. Um, a, but at some point, I do need to go back to deal with my dreamer, but I'm not really in any hurry right now, considering the dreamer is still sleeping, but slowly waking up. Um, I've got a bit of time. Well, well, we do, I mean, have to go back pretty soon. I, I, Nibs is going to want to go back. His Vierans are going to want to go back. Um, I think Full Moon's people would follow us anywhere. Well, They'll follow full moon anywhere. <laughs> but I mean, our, our people are going to have to go back. It, it gets a little expensive to pay them. And unless we're going to be pirates, I don't think the pirates are going to stay with us either. And I don't That's really want to be a pirate. Okay. So Plus, we'll... I kind of have a date. Oh, with um, Bethany or with Wen Feng? Yes. <laughs> Miss grins it's like awesome. Well, so I guess we're decided we'll head back and then go from there. Uh, um, until you, of the twenty, you got, you got four. What? Don't worry about it. All right. <laughs> um. So along those lines, then, if we're heading back. I might have to land in Akira. Uh, uh, there's a druid conclave that's going to be happening in about... Yet. I don't know that yet? Nope. Belay my last. So, um, heading back to Kolkarn's rest, then, once we're done here? Sounds good. Is there anything Most else you definitely. guys? <laughs> I just want to visit a temple if we can before we leave. Okay. Okay. Um, easy enough. It's it, um, uh, it's uh, uh, but it's a uh, religious temple to the various gods of Ravinica. Um, I don't know what you want to accomplish there. Well, since we've already had a chance to, uh, how do we say? bring light to the evils of Celestial Place. I'd like to go to another uh, temple that would be closer to the Celestial and talk to Rendell about it and do the pretty much the opposite of what we did here at the other one. Okay. Um, give me a... Okay, I, I'll just say you succeed um, and I will make a note of it. And then on our travels to that temple, can we run into Rawl at all? Um, um, actually, Rawl was at the fount. Yeah, the Rawl was at the fount. Is at the fa forge. We might have done something before we left the forge, then possibly. Okay. Um, what would we could go back? What would you like to do at the forge? 
Or you can well, get would... back to the forge if you would like. He's still there. <laughs> well, I would plan to with Rindle, because we talked about it before, because, you know, the whole thing, talking about it, if there's yeah. anything mm -hmm. that we needed. And I would have possibly also did something while everyone was there if we needed help. Okay. Uh, what would you have liked to do while there? So depending what, basically, for the everybody you know, um, I'm supposed to be going after Rawl, so to speak, to help out the person we talked about earlier, uh, the people that we're following. And it was just a matter of trying to figure out if I'd be able to gauge to see if we would be able to do anything to Rawl or enough to um, cause any damage or kill them. Because I would look, see if it was a, something that was doable, and I would talk to Rindle about it, and then we possibly would cause conflict before we left, just to get it done, since we have so many people with us. But if I saw that we weren't able to just leave like we did. And the the amount of people there that would be loyal to Raw would make killing him there difficult. Um, and it's hard to judge his strength. You do realize that if he has, it, they keep on referring to Raw as a planeswalker, which means that he is capable of casting seventh level spells. I don't know how Full Moon reacts to knowing that information. In game terms, he's at least level 13. You alright, Tucker? <laughs> like... mm -hmm. So, I, I don't know how Full Moon reacts to that. Yeah, so just saying, depending on talking to Rindle, we'd probably just move on like we did already, because we noticed we didn't decide not to since he had so much support. So are you guys gonna leave the plane then? You know, I, I did want to bring up another idea that we could talk about. I mean, I'm not sure if anyone would be up for this. I mean, I don't know, Full Moon, maybe you're excited about being a shipping magnet, but we've got all these people, and I, I don't know if, I mean, if you want to just like be here with your people, with your mass crew, that that's understandable, but we got this large ship that is, you know, actually kind of belongs to a group, and it's kind of recognizable. Maybe, maybe after we drop some people off, maybe we should sell the larger ship. Oh, use well, that you're... to make the smaller ship everything we need it to be, and then we don't have to pull around this large crew. I, I don't know how many people does it take to run the, the astral site. I can run it with just myself and one other person. Max crew on board is 20 people. I mean, then your people aren't stuck on the boat. You can have them out, you know, proselytizing like you need them to be. Uh, Marlo, if... I think if you mean spreading the word. If you guys do decide to do that, I would recommend... Selling it to Niv Mizzet. He has already expressed interest in it. Um, and I think we might get, get a pretty good ally if you were to choose that route. I mean, it's just something to think about. Mm -hmm. It could simplify our lives. But, you know, I don't know if you want your life simple. I like my life simple. Well, I don't really own the boat to sell it. I mean, you know, I wouldn't sell anything that's not mine. You know how I am. I look towards Dahlia. All right. I mean, it's... Um, and by the way... At possession, point, right? It's kind of ours. Uh, Rindle, who's kind of noticing, really, the um, influences of uh, what just happened to Ice, actually pulls... pulls mis where, where did you get those interesting crystals you just fed your pet? Um, I'm going to whisper back to Rendell. Uh, that was one of the things I picked up on Eberron. Um, You'll have to show me this Eberron at some point. Well, I do have to go back there at some point. Um, but when we get there, we're going to have to try to make it look like I'm not me, because there is a group of kind of powerful people I pissed off. So, standard operating procedure for you? Yes, standard operating procedure. I piss some people off, and um, it's 
I still have business there, but uh, it's going to be a little bit difficult. Um, Rindle also turns to Full Moon when you mention sales. We haven't done the thing. I don't know if that's a great idea. But if we did the thing, so at a character spot, if we did the thing for both places and we were able to do what he was supposed to do, I thought, each side, we would be able to get said sales. Oh, wait a minute. You actually did do the thing for the, them. Okay, never mind. So actually, it's like, yeah, no, the sales will be... I've been promised the sales will be delivered. Didn't think of it that. Sorry, you actually did commit... You did actually succeed in the Demir one. It was this other one that you did. Correct. It has something to do with the ship, so I took care of it. Is it, yeah, the, the, I've been assured the sales would be delivered before we before we cast off. So, is there anything else you guys want to do? Possibly uh, talk to. No, go ahead. Sorry. Talk to. Uh, I can't remember her name and pronouncing it correctly, so I don't want to interrupt her. The R name that we met. Veraska. Thank you. So I'd like to stop by to her, um, bid our farewells, mm -hmm. pretty much give her a progress update kind of thing. Uh, I don't suppose you were able to handle my little issue. Not yet, but uh, in the near future, possibly. Well, if you're ever back on the city, let me know. Um, also, um, Raul has some favorite spots outside of the city. If you, are ever, if you ever find yourself... I can't hear you, Scott. Can you hear me now? Yes. Um, you ever find yourself in on a continent called Faerun? Raoul visits there every once in a while. Uh, you, it might be easier to take him out there. And then she kind of, she kind of waves you away as she tends to some of her actual guild. Pleasure as always. I bow, make my way back to the ship. Mm -hmm. Okay, I let the dockmaster know that I'm expecting a delivery from the is it, and make those arrangements so that they can get on the dock. Okay, so you guys take your long rest and wait for your various deliveries? I think so. Simple enough. Uh, you guys, the morning comes, You there are cannons waiting for the astral scythe, there are Sales, the new sales get um, placed and wasted, and so the Fallen Star now ha actually has its full maneuverability and speed, which makes actually Fallen Star way quicker than the, way faster than the actual Scythe. Still not as maneuverable, but it's significantly quicker. Um, and I, you guys cast off. Uh, where are you guys headed? So, oh. yeah, we're headed back to Suabos. The, uh... Um... Sorry. About this. Um... Fairly uneventful trip. Uh, because you guys are in a strong flotilla, no one's gonna really harass you. Okay. I am going to work on the Gorgon stuff during the trip, because I will have time during my downtimes. Okay. Uh, I, I, I'll update the ship stats when it, um, you guys cast off again, uh, when you use it again. Right now, you're not going to encounter anybody. Um, the, the trip home is... I said it uneventful. Um, you hear some, I, uh, you hear some mutterings from Full Moon's crew about maybe getting paid, um, and 
Uh, but other than that, no, no one mutinies. Uh, morale isn't particularly bad. Um, and you guys make your way back to Subos. Uh, there's a few things. Um, I know we only played an hour and a half, but I might want to kill it for today because th that is a milestone getting back. So that's you guys are now level ten, which is also a tier. Yeah, which is or a is it a tier at eleven? It's, uh, I think it's an eleven, but I count ten as a tier. It's fine. Um, the uh, because of that, there's some things that your characters have to deal with. What Becca was alluding to, she is now an arch druid, which means that she has to. There's a conclave that needs to happen. Yep, I'm gonna have to declare my territory. Uh, Melee, you are now a level ten cleric. That means that you are expected start looking into setting up a permanent temple. I'm not a level 10 cleric. Oh. I took a level of fighter. A level not, yeah. <laughs> okay, so you don't have to, don't worry about that. Uh, Take it. Uh, Mar uh, Marlo, you're split you're multi-class, so we don't have to worry about that. I, uh, there really isn't any kind of tier thing for rogues. Rogues are rogues. Nope. Yep. Um, I learned some new recipes. And yeah. Full Moon, are you taking a little <laughs> paladin? Is that what's going on? Well, if we got the sword, I would, but I'll just take the second level in cleric. Okay. Oh, you actually took levels in cleric? Correct. <laughs> oh, cool. Um, but yeah, so I, I need you guys to get up to level 10. We'll, we'll move on to some fallout um when we actually do the conclave arc this is going to be really weird becca is going to take over dming for that arc because um her character has to will be away for a week and then i get to actually play for like a week or two so, cool uh, but that that won't be next week i'll probably be the week following. but i need you guys to level up to level 10 okay hey. Yep. So, um, for the conclave, Miss doesn't isn't going to be aware of it until we get back, right? Correct. Okay. Um, you know that you're more powerful, but you don't know the you don't you don't are not aware of where the conclave would be. Okay. Okay. Yep. So this is like a story title thing, not like the the level twenty. Feature of druids, right? Right. This right. is like Which a, is also, yeah, yeah. This is kind of more of a the political side of our world's druids. In general, uh. in the world, the druids, they have a territory that they're supposed to be in charge of when you get to a certain uh. level, and it actually makes it more complicated for Miss to move around because now she will have to get permission. To go into yep, another so, druid's territory. So, like when we first started, I had to go see Lioness to let her know I was there. After this, I'm not going to be able to enter her territory without notifying her first. All right. Yeah. Or Vraska's. Correct. I, I'm basically going to oh, have to like. Oh, so is, hug that's her. intergalactic. Like it's not just on the planet. Yes. Yeah. So, also, out of curiosity, is Veraska going to show up to the Conclave? No. The, the Conclave okay. is only on the planet. That would right. be weird. Um, that would be really weird. Plus, we have other... You guys have other fallout that I have to deal with. <laughs> has, yeah. has the history of all of this... Has anyone written up, like, a wiki or something? Yeah. We, we, <laughs> we, did. we start... I, I, I mean... Harry started. It kind of fell off. Uh, yeah. Ooh, well, I've been trying to get, get more information from people. We can go back and rewatch this stuff, but I'm still waiting for information from Chris and from Chester to add to the wiki. Mm. I know I've only just joined for a couple, but if I can help from this point on, I'd be happy to. I love doing that. Yeah, <laughs> That's kind of why I was asking. Okay, thanks. I am going to log off. So. Okay. All right. See ya. Right. Let's go. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you all. Thanks. Bye, guys. Bye. See y'all.